Hello, listeners. Looking for more tales to entertain with esoteric delight and supernatural suspense? I would encourage you to check out Peculiar Stories. Join Indiana Beckett as she takes you on a walk around her particular side of the neighborhood in all things strange and unusual. You may find her on Anchor Podcasts or anywhere that your podcast can be found. I don't know if you can hear that sound in the background, but that's our station's cat. Danielle's gone out to her mother's to help her with some things. So, in the absence of his casual caregiver, he's come to me. I love cats, but I can't help but notice his predilections to violence, as if the multiple cuts and scrapes on my arms from just this morning aren't indicative enough I've watched him stalk every insect and shadow he could find, which got me to thinking. What if your cat is a serial killer? There's a brilliant comedian, uh, Matthew Inman, over in Washington State, who wrote an infographic about the thing. And uh, it was quite interesting to look at. In total, they conducted a study. One out of three cats killed, on average, twice a week. Of those kills, less than a third were brought home, and about a third were eaten, which means a considerable amount of them were left to decay. Cats, no longer great predatory beasts, now practice hunting, simply to hunt, and the corpses that are left for you to see are less than a quarter of the actual amount of kills that they do. There are an estimated 90 to 100 million cats in the United States. That means that about 33 million of them are murderous creatures, and they kill upwards of 3 billion creatures every year. If they were people killers, that means that they would decimate almost half the human population every year. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not about to change the fact that I would snuggle the little bastard the moment he came near me, and that I would pet him and love him and feed him despite the fact that he's repetitively bleeding me. Thankfully, women like scars on men, I'm told. But it does lead me to wonder about those who have nothing in their late hours but the companionship of cats and just how important it is you not leave them hungry. There's a statistic that says that an elderly patients who have cats and not regular caregivers about a third of them every year are eaten by their pets. And the results of how many of them were dead before this happened is inconclusive. These are dark times. And these stories come from very dark places. Listeners, this is Jonas Armitage, and you're listening to Stories from Dark Places. On tonight's show, we will listen to a story from H.P. Lovecraft, another one of his wonderful pieces, and again, thank you to the man, for without you, none of this would be possible. It is December, my dudes, and the cold is upon us. Has it been snowing where you are? We're not at the snow yet, but by God, it feels like we're long overdue. The nights are frigid, and the cars are frozen. I can't help but wait with a cautious apprehension, for when white death shall rain from the sky and make us all absolutely miserable. 
the last thing we need now, I think, is another thing telling us to stay home. Actually, allow me to think better of that. Perhaps snow is exactly what we need to make the rest of us stay home. I mean, apparently, a global plague isn't enough to get people to stay indoors. Perhaps frigid ice raining from the heavens, permeating the streets, and rendering people already questionably able to operate motor vehicles further unable to travel. It's a shame we can't flip a switch and bury everyone under a foot of snow. Then perhaps we might finally get this blasted virus under control. Anyway, pardon the rant. Uh, we shall have our story momentarily. But first, a word from our sponsors. Are you itching for a good story? Laughter among friends? Maybe a mystery? Fire Breathing Kittens is a standalone Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Each episode is a separate three-hour-long story, like a movie for your ears. You can listen to these adventures in any order. Join us on an actual play D&D quest as we solve mysteries, attempt comedic banter, and enjoy friendship. Fire Breathing Kittens Podcast. Fantasy, action, mystery, and friendship. When the last days were upon me, and the ugly trifles of existence began to drive me to madness like the small drops of water that torturers let fall ceaselessly upon one spot of their victim's body. I loved the irradiate refuge of sleep. In my dreams, I found a little of the beauty I had vainly sought in life, and wandered through old gardens and enchanted woods. Once, when the wind was soft and scented, I heard the south calling, and sailed endlessly and languorously, under strange stars. Once, when the gentle rain fell, I glided in a barge down a sunless stream under the earth until I reached another world of purple twilight, iridescent arbors, and undying roses. And once I walked through a golden valley that led to shadowy groves and ruins, and ended in a mighty wall green with antique vines and pierced by a little gate of bronze. Many times I walked through the valley, and longer and longer would I pause in the spectral half-light where the giant trees squirmed and twisted grotesquely, and the gray ground stretched damply from trunk to trunk, sometimes disclosing the mold-stained stones of buried temples. And always the goal of my fancies was the mighty vine-grown wall with the little gate of bronze therein. After a while... As the days of waking became less and less bearable from their grayness and sameness, I would often drift in opiate peace through the valley and the shadowy groves, and wonder how I might seize them from my eternal dwelling place, so that I need no more crawl back to a dull world stripped of interest and new colors. And as I looked upon the little gate in the mighty wall, I felt that beyond it lay a dream country from which, once it was entered, there would be no return. So each night, in sleep, I strove to find the hidden latch of the gate in the ivied antique wall, though it was exceedingly well hidden, and I would tell myself that the realm beyond the wall was not more lasting merely, but more loving and radiant as well. Then one night, in the dream city of Zakarian, I found a yellowed papyrus filled with the thoughts of dream sages who dwelt of old in that city, and who were too wise ever to be born in the waking world. Therein were written many things concerning the world of dream, and among them was lore of a golden valley, and a sacred grove with temples, and a high wall pierced by a little bronze gate. When I saw this lore, I knew that it touched on the scenes I had haunted, and I therefore read long in the yellowed papyrus, some of the dream sages wrote gorgeously of the wonders beyond the irrepassable gate, but others told of horrors and disappointment. I knew not which to believe, yet longed more and more to cross forever into the unknown land, for doubt and secrecy are the lure of lures, and no new horror can be more terrible than the daily torture of the commonplace. So when I learned of the drug which would unlock the gate, and drive me through, I resolved to take it when next I awaked. Last night, I swallowed the drug and floated dreamily into the golden valley and the shadowy groves. When I came this time to the antique wall, I saw the small gate of bronze was ajar, 
and from beyond came a glow that weirdly lit the giant twisted trees and the tops of the buried temples, and I drifted on songfully, expectant of the glories of the land from whence I should never return. But as the gate swung wider and the sorcery of the drug and the dream pushed me through, I knew that all sights and glories were at an end. For in that new realm was neither land nor sea, but only the white void of unpeopled and illimitable space. So, happier than I had ever dared hope to be, I dissolved again into that native infinity of crystal oblivion from which the demon life had called me for one brief and desolate hour. There is nothing better than oblivion, since in oblivion there is no wish unfulfilled. Ex Oblivion is Howard's homage to life and death. An introspective on death is nothing more than a void, a simple end to consciousness. No heaven or hell, simply an end of sensation, a stillness, a peace. With the amount of people on social media these days talking about how they long for an end to their lives, a peace like this seems terribly poignant. Indeed, with the madness of 2020 having mercilessly bludgeoned all of humanity into cowering submission with COVID-19, murder hornets, the Black Lives Matter protests devolving into carnage and violence, military deployments on domestic soil, unmarked government agents abducting people off the streets, well, it's easy to see why people might cling to death as a welcome escape. I'm not aware of what point exactly we passed between layers of reality and found ourselves the living content of a George Orwell novel, but I do cling to the notion that in less than thirty days there will be an end. This will all be over. Whether that is at the hands of the new year, meteor showers, alien invasions, or a great ravenous hellmouth swallowing the entirety of human civilization in one massive gulp remains to be seen. But until then, that's all the time we have. I would like to thank our listeners, YouTube subscribers, Twitter followers, podcast audience, and our sponsors for making our show possible. Join us again next week when we unveil more tales of terror to entertain. Good night, listeners. And please, when your dreams lead you across alien sceneries into the ancient latch of a bronze door, from beyond which glows a strange, mysterious display of colors never before imagined, remember this. There's nothing to be afraid of. After all, some of the best things only happen in the dark. Stories from Dark Places was recorded before an imaginary studio audience. All stories performed on this podcast have express written consent from the original author. Jonas Armitage, his studio manager, and the entire staff of the WZHP Radio Instant are fictitious characters, and it's probably for the best that you continue to believe that.